After viewing this video, you will be able to safely handle soiled linen, safely dispose of medical and non-medical waste, perform high dusting, clean high-touch surfaces, clean the operating room table, clean the ceiling and walls, clean the operating room floor, and accurately check and inspect your work. The circulator generally gives direction to enter the operating room once the case is over and the room is clear. When directed, move your cart to just outside the operating room that you will clean. Don't roll your cart into the room. Stage it just outside the door for the cleaning process. Remember, this cart and equipment is for operating room cleaning only and should not be used in any other area of the hospital. Your personal safety is of the utmost importance. Always wear the appropriate personal protective equipment, such as scrubs, shoe covers, hair covering, and a mask with eye protection. All jewelry and personal effects should be left in your locker. Remember to thoroughly wash your hands and arms before entering the operating room to prevent possible shedding of skin or hair. A recommended alternative is to wear a long sleeve warm up jacket that is buttoned or snapped closed. Once you have put on a fresh set of gloves, you are ready to enter the operating room. The operating room door should remain closed while you clean the room. Begin by rolling a Rubbermaid linen hamper up to the operating room table. Fold the linen corners into the middle of the table, forming a small bundle. Lift the bundle so that it does not touch your body and place it into the linen hamper. Remember, treat all linen as though it could contain sharps or medical waste. After securing the top closures, pick up the used suction container from the suction carousel and place it into the kick bucket. The kick bucket should be double lined with red medical waste poly liners. Gather the inner liner, roll the outer liner down, and securely double tie it before removing the liners from the kick bucket. Always carry waste away from your body. Lift the liners and take them out of the operating room to the central pickup point for medical waste. Remember, always treat every bag of waste as if it could have a sharp object in it. Reline the kick bucket with two red medical liners. We recommend a Rubbermaid Lobby Pro dustpan and cleaning wand to gather and pick up any large debris on the floor. The squeegee wand is preferred over a traditional broom in an operating room for several reasons. It does not cause any small particles to become airborne. It is easier to clean and disinfect than a traditional broom. And it can gather and pick up both wet and dry waste. Once all of the debris is collected into the dustpan, it is easily dumped into a Rubbermaid step-on container that has been lined with the red medical waste bag. Now it is time to gather all other waste from the operating room. Start by picking up any trash around the waste containers. After all the trash has been picked up, roll the poly liner closed and double tie the top for disposal. Remember, never compress the waste materials down into the container with your hands. A sharp item could be in the waste container. Always treat all waste as if it contains sharps. Handle waste for the least amount of time possible and carry the bags away from your body. After emptying a waste container, reline it with the correct size and color poly liner as directed by your supervisor. Secure the liner in place by tying a knot in one of the corners. Don't mix general polybagged waste, which is identified by a see-through or translucent liner with red bagged medical waste. These two types of waste are handled by your facility in different ways at very different disposal costs. We recommend the Rubbermaid Hygiene Flexible Dusting Wand, a high performance dusting sleeve and an adjustable length handle for high dusting. Start by attaching the flexible wand to the adjustable length handle. Bend the flexible wand to the desired shape and extend the handle to the desired height. 
Start by cleaning the boom arm for the light and any other equipment suspended from the ceiling. Always start at the highest point and work your way down. While dusting at the ceiling level, clean all fixtures and hoses that would normally be out of reach. Hoses are frequently missed, and due to their flexible nature, they can shed dust and lint simply by being touched or moved during a surgery. Finally, bend the flexible wand to help dust across the top of all cabinets and shelves. For high-touch areas, we recommend the green Rubbermaid Hygiene Microfiber Cloth. Bring the green 5-quart pail of microfiber cloths into the operating room. These cloths have been pre-moistened in cleaning solution. Directions for preparing the cloths can be found in the Cart Preparation chapter of this DVD. Remove a green microfiber cloth from the green pail and wring out any excess cleaning solution. Starting with the overhead arm, reach up to the point farthest from the light and wipe down all the surfaces with the green cloth. Pivot the light fixture so that the top surface is facing you and continue the cleaning process. Be sure to turn and fold the cloth frequently for optimal cleaning results. Do not be surprised if there is blood or other bodily fluids on the light. If these fluids are present, scrub the area to thoroughly clean the surface frequently turning the cloth to a clean side. Continue to clean all the areas of the light that the surgical team may have touched. Repeat these steps on the second overhead light. Continue using a green Rubbermaid Hygiene Microfiber cloth to clean the work tables and Mayo stand surfaces. Frequently turn the cloth using the eight-sided fold method. Details of the eight-fold method can be reviewed in the Rubbermaid Hygiene Product Use Manual. Thoroughly clean all surfaces of the Mayo stands and tables, including the legs and the base. Be sure to turn the cloth frequently. One area frequently missed is the underside of the tables and stands, as well as their legs. Use smooth side-to-side -side wiping motions for complete surface coverage. Never place a used microfiber cloth back into a pail, as this could be a source of cross-contamination. When finished with the cloth, place it in the linen bag for laundering. We recommend the light blue Rubbermaid Hygiene Glass Cloth for any glass, mirrored, or highly reflective surfaces that may need to be cleaned. This cloth can be used damp or dry for exceptional streak-free cleaning. We recommend a red Rubbermaid Hygiene Microfiber Cloth to clean the operating table. Remove one red cloth from the red pail, wring it out, and use the eight-side fold method to maximize cloth usage. To effectively clean the operating table, you will need to disassemble and move its attachments to thoroughly inspect and clean all of its surfaces. Start by inspecting and wiping the top, sides, and bottom of the table pads. Be careful not to stack a cleaned pad on a surface that has not been cleaned. Next, wipe down the top and bottom of each removable component as you lift it from the base. Always wipe the area of the bed beneath the removable platforms before you reinstall them. With some practice, this process becomes second nature. Remember, frequently turn the cloth during the cleaning process. After cleaning the surface of the operating table, work your way down to the table's base. Thoroughly wipe the underneath side of the table. Continue down the base of the table, remembering to clean the legs and casters. When you are finished with the operating table, put the red microfiber cloth in your laundry bag and return the pails to the cleaning cart. We recommend the Rubbermaid Hygiene 18-inch wet mop, 18-inch frame, an adjustable length handle, and the charging bucket for wall and ceiling cleaning. The yellow charging bucket contains microfiber damp mops that have been pre-moistened with the supervisor-approved cleaning solution. 
Complete directions for preparing the wet mops in the charging bucket can be found in the cart preparation chapter of this DVD and also in the printed product use manual. Open the lid of the bucket and press the 18 inch frame down onto the top microfiber pad to secure it to the frame via a hook and loop attachment. Extend the handle so that you can easily reach the ceiling. Clean the ceiling by pulling the mop from one end of the room to the other using straight strokes. Be careful not to snag any fixtures or sprinkler heads. Each mop should cover approximately 250 square feet. To remove the mop when it is dry or when the task is complete, step on the edge of the mop with one foot and the edge of the frame with your other foot while lifting. Place the used mop in the linen bag for laundering. Rubbermaid hygiene damp mops and cloths are bleach safe, which is helpful when cleaning after a case where a patient may have had C. diff or another pathogen illness requiring chlorine bleach to disinfect. To clean the walls, pick up a new damp mop from the charging bucket and start at the ceiling. Clean in a top to bottom pattern with smooth vertical strokes always keeping the mop in contact with the wall. Next, clean the lower half of the wall using long horizontal strokes in a side-to-side -side pattern, keeping the mop in contact with the wall at all times. Never let the mop come in contact with the floor. Shortening the length of the handle may provide better control. The final step is to mop across the baseboard. When finished, place the wet mop in the linen bag for laundering. To terminally clean the operating room floor, the first step is to move all of the furnishings and equipment to one side of the room. Remember that all furnishings have a start point and must be returned to this point once the floor is dry. Speak with your supervisor regarding a floor plan you should follow. Use a floor scrubber on the open half of the floor, following the manufacturer's directions. Then move the furnishings and equipment to the other side of the room, rolling the casters through the floor cleaning solution, and use the floor scrubber to clean the other half of the floor. When the floor is dry, move all furnishings and equipment back to their starting point. Take a final look at the room to check for any spots that you may have missed. As you look back over the room, review your cleaning process checklist to ensure that you have not missed a step. A green Rubbermaid hygiene cloth is perfect for last-minute touch-ups on frequently touched items like the phone, light switch, wall-mounted panels, and door handles. Remember, never place a used cloth back into a pail due to the risk of cross-contamination. Always place used cloths in the linen bag for laundering. Properly remove and dispose of your personal protective equipment. Let the circulator know you have completed the terminal cleaning of the operating room. Before moving to the next operating room, be sure to thoroughly wash your hands. Hand washing is one of the most important things you can do to reduce the risk of cross transmission. Wet your hands thoroughly before applying soap. Lather your hands, wrists and fingers with soap for at least 20 seconds. Rinse all surfaces of your wrists, hands and fingers. Finish by drying your hands and wrists with a clean, dry paper towel. Dispose of the towel. Your facility may have different cleaning procedures. If you have any questions, ask your supervisor.